Hello there, YouTube. Hello. Hi, I am the Winter Owl, otherwise known as White Owl, otherwise known as Matt. This is, uh, this is, is uh, an extension of my usual Let's Fly stuff. This is a preview, an early look at Kerbal Space Program version 0 0.22. Yeah, down here, the version number. You ignore, ignore this other stuff that happens after version 0 0.22 because that's probably not what you're going to get. What happened? This is a uh, squad. It very, very graciously allowed me and a few other people to have early access to some of their, their testing builds uh, of the game in order to show off some of the new features. So I cannot reiterate this enough. I cannot emphasize this more strongly. This is an early experimental version. It is more than possible. It is extremely likely that this version of the game that I have here, right, that I'm going to demonstrate will have features that the actual released version 0.22 will not. There, there's very likely there will be some changes. This thing is, a, a, is in a constant state of flux as they're working with the, uh, the actual testing team. And the, so they have, you know, bug fixes and you know, feature changes coming out pretty much every day. However, I uh, know the, the broad strokes of the way this is going to work are remaining the same. So let's get in here. Start new. And the first thing you will notice, you start new. What is this? What is this already lit up, highlighted by default? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this this is it. This is no mod. This is no mission controller program. This is uh, this is an actual in-game career mode. Uh, we'll stick with the stick with everything default for now. Okay. Yeah. Note this mode. Note is still under. Oh, they misspelled that. <laughs> this node is still under development. Start. Let's go. Okay. Uh, one thing you will notice here, I just left, let it record straight through that, that scene. Uh, a lot of the actual in-game performance has improved. I'm seeing higher frame rates than I've seen in the past. They've done a lot of bug fixing. They've done a lot of optimization. Another thing you'll notice, what the heck is this? Let's click on it. This enormous building. Uh, this is, is the science. We've got tech trees now. So let's click on this. This is what you start out with. Uh, again, I will notice that uh, the, exactly which parts are available at what, what particular levels in the tech progression. This is also something that's changing. This is what we have here now. Uh, in order to unlock this next level, it has a few more parts. We have more fuel tanks. We also have a mystery goo containment unit. In order to unlock that, it requires five research points, also known as science points, you know, research, five science points. Science is the resource which you need to collect in order to unlock tech. Uh, this is the essence. This is, this is how the, the career mode is going to progress. It, it, the game is not going to give you specific uh, missions, say, you know, fly here to exactly this place and go and pl uh, plant a probe at exactly this latitude and longitude or, or place a satellite into exactly this orbit. No, it isn't going to do that. Uh, what it's going to do is it's, uh, it's, uh, they have added many different si situations and circumstances where it is possible to collect science. Discovering for yourself where and how to collect all this science and what science is to be collected, this is part of the exploration and discovery in the game. I will show you just one mild spoiler, maybe like the first thing that you would find on your own. Yeah, let's click launch here. This very, very silly looking little vehicle. Can you call it a vehicle? Doesn't have any fuel. <laughs> Doesn't have an engine. Okay, there we go. Uh, Okay, so we have this thing here. First thing, take a look at some of these, some, what happens when we click on this. Uh, we've got crew report down here. Let's click on that. Crew report. I recruit my crew. I record the crew's assessment of the situation. Interesting. Uh, data size, five mitts. I'm not certain what a mitt is. Uh, I should have paid more attention to how many mitts this thing can work. Let's extend my communitron. Does that take some electricity? No, it doesn't. Not yet. Um, but what the thing is, you can make a vehicle, you put this commutatron antenna on it, and you put the vehicle into different places, into different situations. You get a crew report is one way of gathering science, and then you can transmit it. Transmit data. Let's click that. 
Communitron, starting transmission, uploading data. Notice it took 30 electric charge over there, but uh, it, it sent my crew report and I gathered some science. I'm not going to tell you exactly what kind of frame rates I'm getting just because uh, everybody with a different computer is going to get different things and you're going to be wondering, oh, why didn't I get that frame rate? Well, I don't know. You've got a different computer. But I will say it is an improvement over what it was before. Jeb, get out there, man. Jeb, let go. Okay, this is another part, very important part of science. You saw that we can, we can transmit things. Jeb, let's click on him. EVA report, what do we got out here? Jeb says he doesn't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here. Okay, that's interesting. Scientific value of this observation, 2.4 science points. Jeb, okay, first let me tell, tell him to keep that data. Jeb, take a surface sample. What do we got? The surface is charred and coated with burnt rocket propellant. There are also trace amounts of a conspicuous green substance. Okay, well, that's interesting. Let's keep that data. Uh, you, know, you may have noticed that that one is worth a whopping nine science points. Jeb can go back here, stand next to the pod, store experiments, which is another way of saying store. Let me see if we can see here, st surface sample, EVA report. All of these were stored back inside of the pod. Jeb, get back inside the pod, dude. Get back inside. Good. All right, now let's get to the space center. This is this is what I was meaning to show you previously. <laughs> uh, we go to the tracking center, and now recover, recover this vehicle. Am I sure I want to recover? And take a look at this science summary. So what do we get? We get uh, we get some data gathered, surface sample. Get some science out of that. We get an EVA report. Get some science out of that. So. We, we gained 11.4 science on that mission. Thank you very much. Very nice. So let's get out of here. Again, I'm not, yeah, not going to work through a, a whole lot of this tech tree, but this is just stuff that you're going to see like immediately, the first steps. You can figure out how the, how the rest of it works from there. And we take a look. What do we have in here? 12 science in the bank. And this thing only takes 5 science to unlock it. So let's research that. Oh, okay. So now we get... These parts are available. Extra fuel tanks, this mystery goo containment unit. Uh, and I'm not going to show you that. You have to discover this some uh, on, on your own. What What is the mystery goo used for? What it's it's You should probably be able to figure out on your own. It's got something to do with science. Yeah. So, yeah, get the mystery goo. Anyway, this net unlocks more stuff. Hey, we've got... Radial parachutes, got ex noon improved landing legs. Yeah, a lot of our old f favorite familiar parts are still here, but you have to spend science in order to unlock them. This for um, this could be seen as for the new player very gently breaking them into Kerbal Space Program and that you start off with very, very basic parts, pod, fuel tank, engine, and you can get science from just launching and flying around. We, uh, and for the more experienced player, this in limiting the parts available to you at any one particular step, this adds an extra degree of challenge to the game. Um, I am very, very strongly in favor of the whole tech tree system. You various debates could be made, um, you know, can discussion over exactly which which parts are available at what level and how much science it takes to unlock them. Uh, you know, various, you know, you can discuss that. I will just note that Kerbal Space Program, in being as, you know, it's long had the reputation as of being you know, just about the most mod-friendly game around. Um, I've already taken a look at some of the file structure. It is, it is beyond simple. It is extremely simple to, to change uh, what, uh, you know, at what tech level uh, your favorite part shows up. So if you're really you're bent out of shape over the order, you can change it your own self. And I will speculate that that just hours after launch, maybe even minutes, I don't know, there will be mod packs available to to reorganize the whole tech tree for for different experiences. Maybe for like from for like my own self, I think I would like to start completely with airplanes and work my way up to actually having rockets sometime later. I want airplanes first. It's already, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah, yeah, that's going to come pretty simply. Let's move out of here. 
Uh, okay, so we have various things. We have uh, uh, things are looking better. Things we got more functionality. Uh, let's take a look at some of the scenery, huh? Yeah, let's go take a look around at some of the scenery. There have been, uh, you know, some interesting things worth changing. I think believed in order to do this, I, I just switched this over to sandbox mode so I get all the fuel tanks available. Uh, let's just go ahead and put together the most basic possible little jet. Okay, what, wait, what's this? Like, just fixed wing parts? You can't change their size or anything? <laughs> I'm not really great, but I, yeah, I remember playing all this stuff. <laughs> Fix that ugliness. Remember, no ugliness allowed on my airplanes. It's part of the rules. Yep, that works. Okay, what are we, what are we gonna call it? I'm gonna call it noob plane. Hang on, capitalize that. Come on, Matt. New plane one. Mm, forgot to add any struts to it. I bet we don't need any. Uh, let's pull this one up here. Okay, Jeb. Yeah, our, our purpose in this launch is we just want to be able to get out and travel around and observe some... Yeah, let's do some trim back. Travel around and observe some of the interesting scenery changes in the game. <laughs> and I just collected five data. Yeah, um... You still have access to the, the custom science parts, the goo container and the science lab whenever you're playing uh, sandbox mode, although they don't actually do anything in sandbox mode. Sandbox, you still have all the parts from, from the beginning. All right, take off. Rotate. There we go. Pull some landing gear up. I think first I want to cross this little stretch of water over here. So yeah, Jeb Jeb's here. He's smiling. He's he's happy to be uh, flying in yet another start a Kerbal Space Program, which is a kind of a interesting metaphysical type question. Is Jebediah aware of all the various iterations of Kerbal Space Program that exist? Probably not. Anyway, he's enjoying this one, uh, and yeah, my my purpose. I just want to come over here and just a little bit of exploring around. Uh, I've discovered that they made some improvements to the island runway over here. So let's go take a look at those. Okay, as we begin to get close enough to see some detail here, take a look and you'll see things have changed. This island runway, it's always been kind of fun, but it's always been a hazard. The, uh, the high berms, uh, the edges of the runway, uh, it's, it's, it's hazardous. Hey, can we pitch back some more? Come on, let's not crash into this thing. I'm just trying to look at it. Hey, look at that! Whee! Okay, so yeah, the edges of the whole thing have been smoothed out. So, in theory, you should be uh, much, much nicer to, to land on, to taxi on, taxi off. You can uh, use, actually use the, the, the dirt runway uh, without uh, risking destroying your airplane all the time. I think it looks more cool than it did previously. It, uh, the the uh, in having the the grass kind of growing over the edges of the runway like that, uh, in my my opinion, it, it contributes to the the image, the aesthetic that it has of uh, being uh, kind of an abandoned place. It's not really upkept anymore. So that was that. All right, now let's. Back across the water, let's go take a closer look at Kerbal Space Center. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe it would have been more efficient to take a close look at Kerbal Space Center first and then come over here, but then I would have missed out on some fun, just, you know, flying around. I'll also take this opportunity to note that the the SAS has has had some tuning. Uh, it is functioning more smoothly than it was before. Here, let's let's actually let's go. I'm going to go to keyboard control for a second here. Turn SAS on. 
pitch back. And if you flew airplanes with the SAS in the previous version, uh, yes, it did work. It worked better than the version before that. Yeah, it's constant improvement, constant work in progress. I like it. Uh, but this is better. The, the SAS, they actually change. Whenever I'm pressing a button to change the attitude or direction, um, you can see it's got this, uh, you know, the, it's like the SAS has two different stages. This is the, the, the attitude hold stage, and I say I put pitch back, and there we've got the, it turns orange. It's got those two arrows to let you know it is no longer holding attitude. It is allowing you to change. I release the button. There and, and, it, and the SAS turns back on. It is a it is smoother and it is a smoother and more intelligent system than what we had before, and I like it a lot. Okay, so here we are approaching. I just wanted to get a closer look at this this wonderfully beautifully modeled uh, research station. I've already forgotten what it's called. What is it? The science station, the research and development station. Anyway, this this whole it's it's not a building. It's a complex which has been added onto Kerbal Space Center. Uh, look at that. Look how pretty that is. We'll sweep around, come back and get another look at it. Um, I, I am so happy that for the actual buildings of Kerbal Space Program, uh, apparently our, our Kerbals, they may build rockets out of scrap metal and duct tape, but their buildings, they go to some effort to make them look pretty. Uh, it, it it does indeed look like it's it's worthy of being the you know the high tech addition to this place. Yeah, I made my my airplane without a whole lot of pitch authority, so I need to be careful with this. Okay, let's try to avoid actually directly crashing into the building. So I just want a closer look, not that close. Bam! <laughs> oh, I forgot. Had a little upslope. I was gonna pitch up. All right. Yeah. What? Am, who am I kidding? It wasn't gonna work. But I accomplished my goal of getting the camera in close, so we can take a look at this. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, see, we got we got loading docks with you know trucks running into each other and stuff. We got uh, this. Must be you know. Look. Does that look like a wind tunnel kind of facility to you? Looks like it to me. Uh, big big observatory. You know they've got a giant telescope inside of there. Various admin blocks. Uh, a uh, small hangar. What do they what do they keep inside that hangar? I don't know. Anyway, I I think I really like this addition to the scenery. I think that looks extremely cool. Uh, okay. Well, I was saying about scrap metal and duct tape. Apparently, I don't feel bad at just leaving parts scattered around randomly. <laughs> <laughs> and having big fuel tanks right in the middle of their science station, but who could blame them? All right, yeah, let's revert back to the space plane hangar. Okay, so there are also, there's a few other changes that are happening in here. In science parts, we got a comms dish. Here, let's just stick that thing on the side so you can see it. So it's a... Uh, and antenna is because a large part of this game is now going to revolve around uh, transmitting uh, data. Uh, it's, it's given us some good parts. I like how it's very low profile. And this is one that it will unfold. Uh, also, you know, a new uh, communitron like that. It's not quite so low prof profile as the other, but it'll do cool things, I betcha. And we got this entire package. Uh, uh, a science package. You take this, you do experiments with it. You get science. Science is cool. Here, let's launch this thing. Let's just take a look at this stuff, huh? New plane one. Click on this. Let's extend my communitron. Yep. That is pretty cool. Let's extend. Oh, I may have not. I may have put these too close. Let's extend this one. See what that one does for us. I. Oh, no. I barely lucked out and they didn't clip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's what you can use. Uh, my understanding is that in the current implementation of the game, uh, transmitter power and range are not actually implemented. Our, these are th these are things that will be planned for the future. Uh, in the moment, at the moment, I believe, and this maybe this could this could be wrong or it could change from the time I record this to the time the actual thing is released. Yeah, that that one antenna is as good as the other one. The only difference being just which one or one you think looks cool. Personally, I think these guys look really exceptionally cool. Let's retract that again. Look at that! Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I like it. 
So to kind of sum up, um, we have uh, some performance increases to the game itself. You know, slower load times, higher frame rates. The, the, the general impression is of smoother overall gameplay. Uh, we have a couple of new parts that have some interesting functionality. But the, really, the, the major feature is this entire science system, science unlocking parts. Um, let me see, one thing I forgot to mention. Yeah, these guys here, see this one's got like 6,000 C is its price. Uh, these, the, the prices are, are not, as I, as I record this, they're not yet implemented. Once you unlock, say, this, once you unlock the stability tab, then you get these three pieces for free. There is no currency other than science. Um, however, that you know that that's a minor detail that, that's going to be tweaked later. The, the, the really huge thing about this is we now have a reason to explore. Exploration is rewarded uh, with more than just role play more than just uh, the satisfaction of setting yourself a challenge can i get to minmus can i land at a specific spot on a specific planet um now you have reasons uh i'm again i'm not going to do too much spoilers of of all the different places that you can do science and all the different ways that you can do science i'm going to tell you you play it go out there and find them there are probably more situations than you might expect uh, you know get that get that goo and just put, just just go nuts with the goo man <laughs> yeah the mystery goo containment unit uh, go nuts with that thing and, and you will be rewarded everybody's got to like some goo yeah if, if there are a thesis statement to, to this whole preview goo is good and I'll, I'll just, we'll close it on that Hang on, hang on, whoop, whoop, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was forgetting, I was forgetting to talk about something really important, just because I'm, uh, I don't take notes, I just kind of go off the cuff, and I'm, I'm a, uh, dumb like that. Let's load up my noob plane. You know what, we've got all these stock airplanes I could have used. This never even occurs to me, I don't use stock planes. Anyway, let's load up my noob plane. There is another incredibly cool feature, which is coming in version 0.22. Uh, take a look at this tab up here on the very right, sub-assemblies. You click on that. The way this works, see, say that you have a particular piece of a vehicle, uh, an assortment of parts uh, that you really are proud of the way it, it all came together. Say, for example, that I really like this whole tail structure. Uh, I've got this fuel tank, and I've got the vertical stabilizer, and I've got the elevators, got the engine, and I'm, I intend to use this piece, this arrangement of parts, uh, on multiple vehicles, uh, but I don't want to be bothered with having to put the whole thing together over and over again. Come over here to subassemblies. We have this down here in the left subassembly drop zone. Take your subassembly, drop it in the drop zone. It wants me to uh, save subassembly. We're going to name it. We'll call this tail assembly one and save. And here it is over in the side. It, it tells you how many parts. Uh, oh, I didn't even see this before. Apparently we've got a little, little trash can icon. We could get rid of it. Yeah, so the way this works, now that this particular arrangement has been saved, you can go and do other things. Let's actually, you don't even have to be in the in the same vehicle assembly, in the space plane hangar or VAB. It's, it's like universal. We'll come over here to this other one. Just, just for demonstrational purposes. Say if I want to build a totally different vehicle. Yeah, let's put some, a couple of, where are those fuel tanks? There we go. Yeah, a couple of those guys on there. So yeah, it's building a, a, a really weird rocket airplane hybrid thing. Yeah, it, and I thought that that tail assembly would be just a perfect thing. Come over here, click on it. Come over here, attach it. And there we have there, there, in, you know, I didn't have to go and put this all together. Um, it, it just automatically remembers the arrangement of parts. Another very useful thing, anybody that has ever wanted to have the space plane hangar style uh, mirrored, uh, you know, we don't have radial symmetry. Instead, we have mirror symmetry. If you wanted to have that in the, the vehicle assembly building without messing around with mods, now you have that ability through the subassembly loader. Uh, and also vice versa, if you wanted to have radial assembly, 
uh, here, which, which we're going to do here, we'll do these guys. If you wanted to have radial assembly, here, let's do, yeah, something like that. <laughs> something really totally absurd. Uh, and you wanted to put it onto an airplane, this is also possible through this. So let's go, let's pull this thing off. Drop that subassembly. This will be, this will be, um, weird. Assy. O2. Here we go. Save that. Yeah, let's pull it back out of there and go back into the space plane hangar again. So, you know, instead of just, uh, you know, twerping around with totally useless structures like I'm doing here, uh, this could very well be used to say, um, you put together a payload for your rocket. Here, let's pull that thing off of there and pull this out of here. Let's go to weird assembly number two. Boom, well, it's not. Oh, sure, it'll work. Sure, it'll work. Why wouldn't it work? <laughs> oh, that's come on, off center. Come on, get on there. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not happy with the wings. Anyway, you get the point. Yeah, pull those wings up. Whoops. All right, we'll stick it right on there like that. Could fly. You never know. Uh, see, okay, uh, one very useful use for this thing. Useful use. Yes, I did just say that. Um, say that you create a really cool payload. You put together a really nifty uh, research research satellite that you're going to send off into the, the outer Kerbin system. Uh, and then you have, uh, you know, you could save that assembly and you could attach it onto your, your favorite lifter, your assortment of fuel tanks and rocket engines, the favorite thing you have for launch. Uh, and you could just save these two things separately and you could uh, splice them together. Say, you know, you, uh, you put your payload together and then just pull the, the launcher. Here, that'll represent, that's sort of like a launcher. <laughs> pull, pull the launcher out and attach it to your payload. Uh, you, you don't have to be building your favorite launcher from scratch every single time. There have been a couple of very useful mods that have been doing this for a while, but it's so good to have it implemented in the stock game. Uh, that's excellent. Okay, so yeah, I was dumb to forget talking about that because it is a major feature, but there, we fixed that problem. We talked about it now. Um, version 0 0.22, lots of beautiful things happening. Not like this. This is ugly. It, you, you know, don't use the subassembly to do ugly things. Do, do cool things. I was in a hurry, so I built ugly. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm very much looking forward to it, and... It'll be a good time when we get to play it. I will talk to all of you later. Goodbye.